the purpose of uh, this model, model one, in the social policy for development planners course is to introduce the participants to the evolving ideas of development, the significant differences in contemporary ideas of development and the principles and political economy of development planning. The emphasis of this model is on why development as structural transformation of economy and society with a focus on improved manufacturing capacity is still essential for African countries. The COVID-19 pandemic further reinforces the imperative of enhancing manufacturing capacity, mastery of technology, state capacity, and equity of access to health and education services, enhancing social equity and improving human well-being. The idea of development as a planned process of economic and social change, which involves the articulation of different sectors of the economy and society in improved productive capacity, social functioning, and improved human well being, is a product of the post Second World War period. For a considerable period until the 1980s, and since the mid 2000s, this involved the production of comprehensive development plans with a strategic plan objective in mind, broken down usually into five year plans. The strategic plan often involves a long term vision, usually set within a 25 to 30 year frame. This is then broken down into five-year rolling plans. While this idea of development plan and planning became prevalent in the period after the Second World War, this was coupled with the privileging of emerging science and scientists in framing the epitome of human perfection and the notion of progress. In the late Renaissance period, to the post-Renaissance era, up to, up to the 19, you know, from the 19th, 19th century, history rather were merely civic education than history rather merely civic education was considered the guarantor of progress. The immanence in history of a perpetual movement to a higher level of progress became entrenched in what would become modern European thought. Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection became a dominant mode of explaining the improvement over the long durée of different species. Karl Marx's idea of dialectical materialism saw in the long run of history the relentless improvement in the organization of production in society and society itself. In the different emerging disciplines, for instance, in sociology and economics, the idea developed of a historically driven evolutionary progress. In the field of sociology, this social evolution was understood and presented as a historical progression around which a hierarchy of societies was created. The French philosopher slash sociologist Auguste Comte argued that society evolved from conquest to defense and then to industry. In the hands of Louis Morgan, the 19th century US anthropologist, societies evolved from savagery to barbarism and to civilization. For Emile Dukheim, the French sociologist, the binary was between traditional society and modern society. For Max Weber, the shift was between traditional to rational society. A change from societies ruled by traditional norms to those governed by rationality. For Ferdinand Tonis, 
the shift similar to Dukaim was from dementialed or community where social relations between individuals is based on close personal and family ties to a gesellschaft or society in which social relations are based on impersonal ties. The idea of development as a on one social location defined by birth to a modern society based on rational rules and achievement orientation rather than accident of one's birth will come to define core elements of the modernization school in development studies. In economics, then, in Adam Smith's implicit idea that progress is derived from mercantilist accumulation. However, it was in Karl Marx's idea of historical history of success in much of this thinking about historically mediated social evolution. Society is understood as becoming a natural order of social progression. Central to the thinking is that the European society of their times was at the top of the human evolutionary ladder. In the modernization schools take on development, Euro-America became the target towards which countries of the underdeveloped or developing world are supposed to evolve. Development was pre presented as a process of being like, in other words, being like the West. A development becomes a process of emulation of the West in the structure of economies, social institutions, normative orientation, and value system. However, between 19th and 20th century, the idea of progress took on the form of an outcome of deliberate pl planned process and intervention rather than a naturally occurring process. Two illustrative cases are the industrialization project in Germany in the 19th century and the project of mitigating the boom and bust cycles of capitalism under the rubrics advanced by John Maynard Keynes. Industrialization in Germany from 1870 was concerned with catch up with Britain and evolved, involved deliberate state intervention and policies intended to stimulate the process. The German economist Friedrich List will counsel his country against the free market ideas that others like Britain were championing and advocating instead of the use of a tariff to protect local industry. In response to the economic and social consequences of the Great Depression, from which ran from 1929 to 1933, Millard Keynes advocated deliberate public efforts at demand side management, involving the social regulation of the economy to prevent the boom and bust cycle that led to the Great Depression. Welfare spending, in particular transfers in cash and increased public spending in periods of economic downturn, involved stimulating demand for, for products and services to sustain production and prevent unemployment and the collapse of business. Development as the coordination of public efforts at defining, collecting, and deploying resources and steering an economy towards achieving said visions of the desired state of economy and society, as indicated earlier, is mostly a phenomenon of the post Second World War period. This idea of development has multiple heritages. One derives from consensus in Latin America with the failure to develop. 
Even after a century of independence from Spain and Portugal in the early 19th century, the other <clears throat> has to do with what was considered the success of Soviet Union in achieving rapid industrialization from being a predominantly agrarian society, a, notable, a, not, a noted enabler of such rapid industrialization was the five-year development plan initiated from 1928. A final source of the inspiration for development as a deliberate and programmatic effort that arose from the concerns most countries emerging from under colonialism arose from the concerns of most countries emerging from under colonialism to ad in addressing the problems of backwardness. One attempt to explain the Latin American lack of development derived from Western anthropological tendency to explain, in quotes, uh, the lack of development. This often draws from colonial narratives of the distinction between developed and backward people in moral and psychological terms. Such anthropological explanation claimed that Latin America failed to develop because its people were ostensibly beset by backward mentality. Another school of thoughts from Rao Prabish to the dependency schools sought to explain the crisis in terms of the mode of insertion of Latin America into the global economy. From 1920 on, Raul Prabish explained this mode of insertion in terms of Latin America being largely a producer and exporter of primary commodities and an importer of Finnish industrial products and capital goods. The terms of trade negatively affect the exporter of primary commodities. Over time, there's a circular decline in the prices of primary commodities relative to imported industrial products. The primary producers will need to produce more of the same good to buy the same amount of industrial goods. Endogenous industrialization was the way to extricate the countries from the conditions of adverse insertion into the global economy. This will require deliberate effort at stimulating industrialization, starting with import substitution industrialization. The success of Soviet Union's planned progress process of rapid industrialization in the 1930s with the instrument of defined economic objectives, mobilization of resources for achieving the targets provided the impetus for the idea that development can be planned and deliberately engineered within a limited time frame. In the early 21st century, we could speak of two dominant takes on the idea of development. There is the international development or what has been relabeled global development perspective that dominates the policies and the thinking of bilateral and multilateral actors. This perspective as framed by actors defined as donors abandoned the pursuit of the structural transformation of the economy in the 1980s, especially as this relates to industrialization. The neoliberal attacks on industrial policy underpin this shift. Within this framework, development has come to mean a focus on the relief of extreme poverty. Mkandawire noted that this idea of international development is grounded, and I quote, in the moral premise of helping distant strangers, end of quote. This contrasts with the yearnings within the developing countries themselves in terms of an approach to development based on what is often referred to as the Bandung spirit. This refers to the inspiration behind the 1955 Asian African Solidarity Conference held in Bandung, Indonesia from 18th to 24th April. The Bandung Conference Initiative will subsequently frame South-South cooperation 
and initiatives such as the Afro-Asian People's Solidarity Organization, the Non-Aligned Movement, and the Campaign for a New International Economic Order. A current conception of development animated by Bandung Spirit is, is the African Union's Agenda 2063. The Asian and African countries, most of whom were just emerging from colonialism, were driven by their opposition to colonialism, the pursuit of equitable world order, and the mutual respect in the conduct of international affairs. Development within this framework involved structural transformation of the economy and society, the mastery of technology for overcoming backwardness, improving the well-being of their population, and the development as a guarantor of their sovereignty. Catch up in this context was not a matter of being like the West. It requires learning from the development pioneers without engaging in mimicry. It requires considerable efforts at knowing oneself and grounding a nation's development trajectory on its history. It involves a significant investment in a country's knowledge system. In its current form, the idea of development can be defined as structural transformation. Plus, the development has to be inclusive and democratic and responsible and sustainable use and the responsible and sustainable use of Earth's resources. The path to a democratic and inclusive development raises the immediate issues of social policy. Particularly, in particular, a transformative social policy approach in, the connect, in connecting social and economic policies. Equity and inclusivity serve as a guarantor for of a stable development process. Unlike the first two decades of Africa's independence, when the end, the end of colonialism served as the initial condition for development planning. For development planning and development planners in the Africa's 21st century, the last decades of the 1980s and the 1990s will serve as the initial condition. Six slides, six, the next six slides seek to capture this initial condition and the lessons that need to be taken forward in rethinking Africa's development planning. First related to the crisis of the terms of trade that face African, the face countries whose engagement in international economic order is based primarily on the export of primary commodities. The health and overall performance of the economy depends on the interaction of, on the actions of external actors in terms of the prices and volumes of the demand for primary commodities. While the terms of trade between 1970 and 1980 was reasonably favorable, was reasonably favorable, this turned negative after 1980, as you can see on the slide, with the attendant balance of payment and fiscal crisis. Similar commodity cycles of high swings in prices followed by price collapse played themselves out between 2002 and 2008 and between 2010 and the current period. And we can see this for instance, uh, in particular with uh, petroleum prices. Uh, and this is most especially uh, evident uh, generally among the what we call the primary producers of, of minerals. Agricultural primary producers face the difficulties of engaging in international trade based on commodities that are particularly income in, you know, are, are not particularly income elastic. Mineral producers in the area of fossil fuels face the added long-term difficulties of the increased role of renewable energy and um, uh, you know electrically you know uh, sustainable uh, electrical powered uh, um, uh, you know vehicles. 
A further issue of the 1980s and 1987 as the new initial condition relates to gross domestic savings. As the figures you know, uh, uh, in the next few slides show, the period between 1980, before 1980 showed a gradual but persistent increase in gross domestic savings. Uh, the period after 1980s, uh, within the context of the neoliberal structural adjustment program, has seen a collapse in gross domestic savings, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. By contrast, the second slide showed a persistent improvement in uh, um, gross domestic savings uh, in Asia and the Pacific uh, uh, region. This is part of this is part this is part of the indicative measure or what Mkandawiri referred to as the maladjustment of Africa's economies. Domestic savings, both public and private, are essential for mobilization of resources for financing development. The next slide in, in, in structural terms is, is instructive in terms of the of, of illustrating Africa's lost decade. Why per capita income increased from 1960, between 1960 and late 1970s. The two decades after that was of collapse in per capita income. It took 2011 for per, per capita income to return to the level it was in 1974, almost three decades earlier. Read together, slides 16 and 17 show the low rate of you know ma ma merchandise exports excluding oil across the period 1970 to 2000 and the meager share of africa in global manufacturing exports with only a negligible increase between 2005 and 2013. Over the period, China in particular and East Asia broadly have increased their share of the manufacturing exports. The anti-industrial policy neoliberal mantra of the 1980s and the 1990s are as wrong-headed as one can be. What the COVID-19 pandemic reminded us of are the concerns over the lost decades and the maladjustment of African economies since the 1980s. The stomping of the industrialization project of the 1960s and the 1970s and the deindustrialization in some cases deepened the informalization of African economies. The low production Activity concerns of the informal sector, plus the labor market's poor regulation, combined low income with non existent social insurance protection. The stomping of industrial policies since the 1980s made for low manufacturing capacity with limited capacity for endogenously grounded manufacture of high tech products for use in responding to the pandemic. Years of underinvestment in public health services will have opened the continent to high mortality rate for the pandemic if the initial projected numbers have been realized. Similar relative weakness in investment in national system of innovation meant that there was no national vaccine production of, of vaccine production capacity or efforts Let's shift our attention to the principles. And the political economy of development planning. 
And thinking about the issues around development plan, it creates issues that have been on African agenda since the Lagos Plan of Action in 1979, enhancing spread effects. Development, even growth, creates benefits and costs. Centers of industrial productions are likely to attract the inflow of human and material resources and wealth. This can be to the detriment of outlying regions, draining these adjoining regions of resources. This is an example of the, of the backward backwash effect. The spread effect is the positive sharing of the benefit of development and economic growth by the different regions. Attention needs to be paid to mitigating backwash effects and enhancing spread effects nationally and regionally. Location of industry and other development pro projects, as well as the provision of infrastructure to reduce the cost of doing business is essential. The importance of the pursuit of industrialization in an, ecologi in an ecologically friendly way is in the degree to which the engine of growth of the economy are internalized. In other words, they are located within countries and regions. In addition to the production of commodities generally that are generally more income elastic, manufacturing outputs allows for synergies with innovation. Research and development efforts funded and supported through the investment in national research and education institutions build linkages with different sectors of the economy. Ensuring intersectoral linkages is vital in the development planning efforts. Intermediate processing plants with adequate infrastructural support can be located close to the areas of agricultural production, for instance. Similarly, social and economic aspects of planning need to be foregrounded. This will range from investment in human resources uh, and development to support the development effort itself. It will involve investment in health infrastructure, housing, transport and education that underpins the need for economic development and ensures the equitable distribution of the benefits of development. Again, these are fundamental aspects of the linkages between social policy as a component of development. It makes it easier to create an environment of equitable outcome that makes long-term development sustainable. It mitigates the cost of development, which can be quite disruptive socially while enhancing wealthy outcomes. In particular, it mitigates the trickle up effects when development and economic growth is left on its own without any attempt at social policy intervention to create equitable and inclusive development. The starting point about development planning is that it is driven by visionary agenda setting. What is at stake is a vision of a desired state to which society aspires. It is about seeking to map a path to a destination that in the current context is a matter of dreams or imagination. Such visions of the future are contested and arriving at a shared vision of the future is a vital aspect of mobilizing national energy and drive to achieve it. It will require a national sense of ownership in the vision. In this regard, the crafting of national development plans, national development plans should be understood as a nationwide mobilization effort across class, ethnicity, religion, gender, and regions. The level of inclusivity in the different phases of development planning is essential for ensuring ownership and national commitment. Extensive consultation is necessary. In this sense, a development plan is not merely a technical effort, as important as technical competence is for a successful development planning effort. 
Planning is as much a political project as it is a technical one. A national development plan in the Sutu cannot merely be something drafted by a team of consultants drawn from a consultancy firm in New York. Even where no national expertise is required, it must be embedded within the national process of determining the development vision and mapping out the pathways. While development planning requires input from different sectors of the economy and departments of government, it may be prudent to vest the project itself in a distinct national planning commission. This allows for the concentration of experts drawn from diverse disciplines, not merely economic, are operating in an interdisciplinary context framework. The planning commission should be located such as to carry the authority of the country's leadership, the prime minister's office or the president's office. Now we'll move to the principles of development planning. Good planning, as Todd Littman notes, and I quote, requires a methodical process that clearly defines the steps that lead to optimal solution. Among the process involved, end of quote, among the process involved are important principles such as comprehensive or comprehensiveness. Now the plan is sufficiently comprehensive in that it ensures that all significant options and impacts are considered. In addition to guaranteeing essential correct connectedness between different projects, the assessment of the social and environmental impacts of the individual project should be undertaken by experts. While social and environmental impacts cannot be eliminated, efforts must be made to minimize the adverse impact of development projects. The comprehensiveness of the, pro of the process will also involve detailed attention to the financing of the plan. Resources have to be secured for the implementation of the plan without ge jeopardizing the fiscal health of the economy. The prior existence of an inclusive development plan ensures a rational basis for engagement with external actors such as donors uh, both in securing financing and prevent, preventing donor-driven projects that are at variance or a loggerhead with the development plan itself. Efficiency. Choice of implementation plan and techniques needs to be as efficient as possible, minimize costs, and ensure on-time delivery of the project. The design process and the impact assessment would be necessary for determining the most efficient time and cost. Projects may require requisition of land. Part of the process of ensuring inclusive development planning is information sharing, dissemination, and ensuring that all the stakeholders are adequately informed about every stage of the process. Integratedness. Ensuring a synergistic connection with different parts of the overall development plan is vital for its rationality and ensuring successful implementation. Principle of being logical. The plan and the linkages within its sub-projects also need to be logical. Logical sequencing of projects become exceptionally important when ensuring and ensuring that supporting infrastructure, for instance, are in place before the commencement of the projects that depend on the infrastructure. And final principle that we'll discuss here is transparency. In ensuring inclusivity and ownership of the plan, the transparency of the plan initiation, project, project design, and implementation should be available to and understood by all the stakeholders. Transparency is vital in mitigating the adverse impact of ins insufficient or false information. It requires the use of a diversity of information outlets to reach a diverse range of national and local 
stakeholders. So we shift our attention to planning framework. A planning framework is concerned with what Ligman refers to as, and I quote, the basic planning structure, planning process structure, end of quote. This applies as much to project planning as it does to comprehensive development plans. In this sense, we look at the question of principles. This refers to the basic rule or concept used for decision making, vision. There has to be a clarity of a desired state for which the plan aims and for which the different articulated components of the plan are intended to achieve. Clear definition of problem. As much as possible, every conceivable condition that can be adversely, that can adversely impact the accomplishment of the goal in a cost and time efficient manner is identified before the commencement of the plan or the sub-project. In many instances, conditions will emerge during the plan implementation process that will adversely affect the plan or project. Available expertise, in other words, technically competent experts, need to be on hand to find solutions. Problem solving skills of an engineer will be a desirable type to have in abundance. Goals, the desirable conditions to achieve as part of the visionary agenda setting will be a necessary part of the framework. This late man notes are, uh, and I quote usually, too general to be quantified, end of quote. Objectives. On the other hand, objectives are more specific. In other words, there are potentially quantifiable ways to achieve the goals of the plan. The targets, these are even more measurable deliverables that are components of the objectives. Milestones can be set for achieving the target. And performance indicators, and these are practical ways to measure progress towards uh, the objectives set out in the project plan or development plan, you know. Plans speak in something like a development plan, but can involve the process of conceptualization, design, and implementation of a project kinds of the implementation process. Even plans need to have built into it evaluate its evaluation criteria, methodology, and time framework. Generally, targets are set and a milestone for achieving In, in broad terms, the desired state to be achieved. Rolling plans, usually five-year plans, are developed in the achievement of the strategic plans. The annual budget will be designed to have stage implementation of the rolling plans. It is therefore possible to have built into, uh, the, say, a five-year development plan, annual reviews of the target as part of the planning process. In addition, some targets may be achieved ahead of time, others may fall behind targets. The midterm review is also another critical time and political for mobilizing and animating the different stakeholders. The targets, targets may be readjusted as a result of the midterm review, but the ultimate objective is a renewed commitment to the aim of reaching a desired state. The objective of social policy in development context is as you see, 
in the context of develop, development. What are the specifics of such questions in the the purposes of a post-pandemic recovery that is inclusive, that is resilient, uh, that is sustainable? Within the framework of the overall theme of the course, this model has sought to frame the idea of development, trace its genealogy, and demarcate the diversity of its meaning. With an emphasis on the use of industrial policy in achieving the transformation of the economy. The focus is on a development process that is inclusive, that is de democratic, that is ecologically sustainable. At the heart of such an effort is a focus on equity, gender, intergenerational, ethnic, and regional. It is about inclusivity, it's about resilience, it's about sustainability. It is in this context that we set the political economy and the principles of development planning. Equity and inclusivity are not treated as the end product. That again returns us to the question of social policy. And we can focus on a range of uh, what you call it discussion uh, points. Uh, why, for instance, do we need development? coordination, uh, why uh, future are there for public and civil servants uh, in, the, in the development planning process? Uh, you know, what, you know, how do we transcend uh, moving, you know, what you call the, the, the night watchman state? And why is it more than just a question of being a capable state, for instance, uh, in, in planning process. And <clears throat> when we talk about structural transformation, what do we mean by this? What are the drivers of development plan? Why is regional development plan approach important, especially in the context of Africa? And how do we mean And what is the importance of reduction of inequality and enhancement of inclusivity in a development process? Thank you.